Hey there YouTube, today I'll be doing part two to my enemy NPC tutorial. Part one, I did not expect to get so many views, so I gotta thank you guys for watching and giving comments in the video that really motivated me to make part two. I didn't really expect anyone to watch it, so now I feel kind of obligated to make part two. So part two is all about having the enemy NPC do damage to our player when it gets close enough. If you haven't watched part one, I recommend you guys go do that. But part one was all about having the enemy NPC chase you when you got close enough. And to do this, after we created our NPC, we put in a script within the humanoid and we called it enemy controller. And this code really just detects the closest player to the enemy NPC and then checks to see how close they are and if they're a certain distance away they move in the direction of that player otherwise uh, the npc will just stay still so it's very basic this part of the tutorial will be adding damage to the npc so then when the npc gets close enough to players he'll start damaging the player we'll be doing this within the same script from part one so enemy controller so this is uh we're going to take the script from part one and to start this off we're going to add some variable local variables to the top and the first thing we should do is set the damage that we want the npc to do i'm just going to set five we want to set the distance he attacks at uh attack distance it's important to have the value you set for this in between stop distance and target distance because we made it so that the enemy NPC will stop when you're when it's five studs away from you. And that's so it doesn't run into you and keep on running into you once it's gotten close enough. So if we have this value even closer, then unless you run into the NPC, uh, the NPC won't attack the player because it will stop before it gets to four studs because it stops at five. So it has to be in between these two numbers. I'm just going to set it as uh, seven. Seven's a good number. Another variable we need to create is attack rate or weight, attack weight. Yeah, attack weight sounds right. So this will be a variable that if the NPC attacks and we have this set to one, it has to wait one more second in order to be able to attack again. So the longer the wait, the less attacks per second the NPC will do. And the last thing we're going to need is a uh, last attack. And this is just going to be kind of like a timestamp of when the NPC last attacked. And we're just going to set it to whatever time it is when the script first runs. Tick just gets the seconds of time it is in seconds. So this is a perfect way to determine how long it's been since the last attack. And I'll show you guys how we do that later with this. So that's, I think, all the variables we need. If we need more, we can always come back to the top and add some more. I'm going to go into our heartbeat function at the bottom because this function is all done. This is just finding the nearest player and it does what it needs to. So I'm just going to minimize it. And now we have this heartbeat function. And this is the function that runs every physics frame. So 60 times per second. And this is also where we check we get the nearest player, we check to see how far away the player is, and we move towards the player if it's, the NPC will move towards the player if it's a certain distance away. We don't wanna change this if statement inside here, but we want to add a new if statement inside the outer one, because this if statement makes sure that there is a player. And that means there won't be any errors if there is no player, so, what we want to do here is we want to check to see if the player is um, close enough in uh, considering the attack distance. So we're going to do something similar to this where we just check if distance is less than or equal to attack distance. And so this would be a very simple way to just check if the NPC is close enough to attack. And you might just want to end it right there and make the enemy NPC attack, which it will work, but not the way you'd expect. And I'll show you guys what it does. So first let's make the NPC damage the player. 
So this is our player variable. And we're going to take its character by doing dot character dot humanoid dot health. We're going to lower it by the damage. I think we just called it damage. Yep. So now the the player's health is lowered by damage. So if you want him to do more damage, you just raise his value or lower it if you want less damage. And so this should work as an attack, like damaging the player. So let's go test it out. And like I said before, there's a little bit of an issue with the code right now, but this is, I'm expecting it because I want to show you guys how not to make it. And yeah, so it does indeed damage me. Oh gosh, it's coming back again. Oh no. Okay, now he's too close to the spawn. That's bad. Anyways, um, I wonder if I can get away. No, ah, I bet I can get away now. Nope, I ran the same direction it was at. Okay, whatever. So as you can see, the, uh, the, the enemy NPC does indeed damage me, but it does it so fast that it almost insta-kills me. It's actually damaging me once per, well, 60 times per second because this runs 60 times per second around and it's doing five damage each time. But normally an NPC will attack like every second or every two seconds. So let's change that so that it actually takes our attack weight into consideration. And to do that, we just need to determine how long it's been since the last attack. And if it has been a certain length of time, then we allow it to attack and update the last attack um, variable. So I just said a lot, so I'll show you guys visually now. So we're gonna make an and in the if statement that we created. And so then here we wanna get the amount of time it's been since the last attack. So we're gonna take the current time in seconds minus the last attack, which is the current that, that current time in seconds. And subtracting them will get the difference of time in between those two instances. And so now we just take that, which is the length of time it's been. And if it's greater than or equal to attack weight, then we can attack. However, it's very important that not only do we check if it's been a certain length of time, but we also update that the last attack is now equal to the current time because once this if statement runs, that means they're attacking. So you got to update that they did indeed attack. If you don't update this, then after a second, the NPC will be able to attack as many times as it wants again. So now if we go back, we do have it set to one, so it should attack every second. If we go back and press play go and have the dummy attack. Now the dummy is indeed attacking every second. It doesn't show the blood flash screen um, every time it attacks. So if you look at the health bar, my health is still lowering. It's doing five damage per second. So yeah, it, 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 it damages. <laughs> it works. So now all you have to do if you want to change any of the settings, you just go up to the top of the script and change the numbers so I can set it to damage 15 and attack weight 0.5 and now it will attack twice per second and do 15 damage so he should kill me much quicker boom and so it might be annoying to some people that to change these values we have to go inside the script rather than being able to set a property uh, like health in the humanoid. We can automatically set that to whatever we want in the property section. If we select a humanoid in the explore tab, you might wish you could add your own properties for these variables and you actually can. And this is a very underused aspect of Roblox studio that I think is underappreciated. It's called attributes. So I'm going to go out of the script. I'm just going to click on enemy controller, but not go within. And if you look at the properties, you should see the basic name, parent, and a disable behavior property. But at the bottom, there's a section called attributes. And this is where we can add custom 
property like thing. So they're not technically properties, but they really do act like it. Um, just accessing them is a little bit different than normal properties, but here I'll show you. So I'll add an attribute. If you click the add attribute button, it'll ask for a name and a type, what type of variable it is. So I'm going to do damage and set the type to number. And now, and this is within the script, so not within the script, but it's the script object. And as you can see under attributes, damage is equal to zero. And I'm actually within the script. I'm just going to copy over all of these variables here, except for attack weight into attributes. So uh, I want to do target distance. And these are all numbers. So note that you can do more than just numbers, but that's all I have working for me in this script right now that I am converting into attributes, stop distance, attack distance and attack weight whoops so as you can see I set some to being strings that's not cool now I need to redo all that that's uh, very important that you make sure you do that correctly so stop distance Attack distance and attack weight. Okay, now I'm gonna put this up here because apparently my activate windows just gets in the way. So you might be looking and be like, okay, they're all set to zero. Well, now this is the time where we'll set all of the attributes to the values we have within the script directly so damage is right now 15 attack weight is 0.5 attack distance is 7 stop distance is 5 and target distance is 20 and so right now the script will still be using the the values we set directly within the script and not the values we set within the attributes so we're going to want to set these variables to the attributes instead and to do that we just take our script that we set the attributes in or the object you set the attributes in you don't have to set it inside the script itself but that's what i'm going to do and to get an attribute you just do object and then function get attribute and then you just call the name of the attribute so this one would be target distance and that's all you need to do now it will retrieve the value that we have for target distance which is 20 and set it within the script so I'm just gonna copy and paste everything here um, right now they're all being set to 20 which is not right but I'm gonna go in and uh, update it stop distance damage attack distance and attack weight and now all of the variables should be set using these attributes now we don't have to go into the code at all to change some of the settings of this enemy i just have to click on the script and set the variables here no need to look at any confusing code also uh, organizes it from in alphabetical order, which can be helpful as well. And if we go and test this, we need to make sure that converting it to attributes actually worked. And from the looks of it, it has the same settings we had before. So now we can test it out again by changing some of the values. Let's say damage is three, but attack is every four four times per second we'll see if it responds to the changes and it does you can see my health bar going down every four times per second but very slowly so then oh he's chasing me the next tutorial will be over how to animate the character and how to basically just the appearance so as you can see right now he just kind of floats and just chases you like a lifeless statue 
So in the next tutorial, we'll be animating the character and modeling it so then it looks a little bit better. Um, stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.